very excited. I'm ready for it to start. Kind of anxious about it, but I'm really, I'm really ready for it. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I just want to make sure that the the rain goes well and um, we get to do everything we want to. How am I feeling? Um, I'm petrified right now. You know, uh, it's not every day that you die. <laughs> like, even if it's fake, it's just a little scary. I can't tell. Mostly stressed. Very anxious. I was yesterday. I wanted to be a part of Shadow Dreams because I like the message and the, the people that are in it, and I just wanted to act a little bit and have some fun with it. Um, I like the meaning behind it, and I also appreciate all the um, police officers and the firefighters' involvement. I honestly don't know. I think my sophomore year, we did like the signs for it, and whoever had the best sign won, and my sign wasn't the best, so I was like, I'll just ask Officer Jones if I can be in it. Raise awareness and have fun. I wanted to kind of do an acting sort of thing. I'm most nervous about the fact of like going to jail because it's scary, but um, I think I'll be okay with that. But I'm just, I'm just nervous. So. Um, I'm nervous that everything goes as planned. Uh, there's so many people that have worked so hard on this that I just want everyone to be happy with the end product. I think I'm most nervous about like playing dead. It's not my forte. I don't, I don't play dead a lot. I honestly don't know. <laughs> it's more along the lines of, I hope it does well. My friends will be kind of like upset about it and kind of sad. I'm probably, and then my parents, they'll they'll go along with it pretty well. Uh, so my friends and family, I know my mom's like she didn't even want to be here for it, but my dad was like all for it, and he's probably gonna like act along with it. So it's just a little bit different between the family members. I wouldn't be surprised if they all cried, whether they knew it was real or not. Getting out, pulled out of class, it was really surprising because I wasn't expecting it. And it was honestly just a very surreal moment, just like hearing them say my name and saying that I died. It was just, it really like shows that that stuff does happen. And I think it was um, awesome for like my classmates to see that because it was just like very impactful. And I think it was just really interesting. I was just very emotional. Um, it was really hard watching my friends watch me and their reactions. So that made me that made me even more like sad and it was really hard. Um, I felt really strange. I it was kind of like an out of body experience because it was kinda of like it was happening to someone else. It was kind of surreal. At first, it's, it seems kind of like silly um, when they walk in. There's like it's kind of a big production, and I was just kind of sitting in class. But then after they start reading your um, like your obituary, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of weird. Getting pulled out of class right now, I felt that it was impactful, especially going out on a gurney and as if it was a real life situation. And I feel like it affected or impacted the classmates a lot as well. I feel that a lot of people were kind of shocked and confused about what was going on. Um, really happened really fast, but no, I think it's something that everybody needs to be aware of. It was really, it wasn't emotional, but it was definitely like weird being like kind of the center of attention and I didn't know, really know how to like react. I don't even know how to describe it. It was unsettling to have to lay down inside of the body bag and then be zipped up in front of my entire class after hearing my eulogy be read. I got pulled out of class. I was pretty nervous. Um, I was definitely taking a nap and woke me up. And everyone was just staring at me and the Grim Reaper stood over me. And I was like, oh, we're doing this? Okay. I wasn't getting emotional whenever they pulled me out, but like I deal with stress, I laugh, so I was just like, I was just kind of in shock, and I was like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. But I think like my teacher, like uh, Miss Jackson, I think she kind of started getting emotional, and like I think everyone was just really shocked, and, like didn't know how to take it. But yeah, I think definitely like, throughout this process, people will be emotional. My yeah. classmate, I saw my classmates starting to cry, which made me cry, and honestly, it just watching that happen and myself going through that was really difficult. Uh, yes, me and my classmates, as far as I could tell, were able to hold it together. I kind of didn't look at my other classmates because I felt like that would make it harder for myself. 
Uh, I think for like for like the first few seconds, we were all kind of like like laughing, um, but after after again, like I said, after they started reading the, the obituary, it all kind of it's it's it all seemed a little bit more real and uh, serious. Um, I'm not sure about my classmates. I didn't see any of them, but personally, I didn't get emotional. I don't think I will until the funeral part, which is tomorrow with my parents there. Me and my close friends got emotional during the actual car crash scene, but not that I noticed during class being pulled out. All my classmates were pretty much just staring at me. They didn't really say much. And felt like all the pressure was on me. Some people, their jaws were just gaping, and that was about it. I think um, my parents probably had a really hard time writing my eulogy just because it's like crazy to think that they would have to um, even think about like me dying like at such a young age and I think it just really goes to show that like you never know like when something bad is going to happen so just live every day to the fullest and just make smart decisions so hopefully nothing like this ever happens. My parents writing the eulogy was probably really hard because they had to write it as if I actually died which I couldn't imagine myself doing that for my child, so I'm sure they were probably really emotional while doing that. Um, they probably felt very emotional writing um, the eulogy that they read that they read in front of the class uh, because it was it would have been like they were having to write it for me as if I was actually dead. When my family was writing my, my eulogy, they were probably really upset because they're all pretty emotional people and we all have a really tight bond, so I bet they were pretty upset. I hope they were pretty upset. When I first told my mom about Shattered Dream, she supported it because of the impact that it has and the great program that it is and that it brings awareness to all the students here. When my family wrote my eulogy, I, could, I, I bet they were upset. I bet my mom was, was crying thinking about her uh, her son dying like this. Yeah, no, I, I don't think she was uh, she was happy about it, but it happened. Um, personally, I was not, I did not like hearing what my parents had to say. Like, I've had like relatives and friends like pass away too early and knowing how, that they had to go like through that really was emotional. And then also um, my classmates held it together pretty well, but I think they were more surprised than anything. Well, I knew that my mom wasn't going to be able to do it, so my dad told me he would have to do it if he got it. Um, but I'm sure they were really struggling with having to write that about me, especially all the kind things they wrote in it. Uh, when my mom was writing my eulogy, I could tell because she she was crying one day, and I was like, why are you crying? And she did, she without even thinking, she's like, oh, I'm writing your eulogy. I was like, wow. <laughs> Well, why are you writing my eulogy? So, uh, she was definitely pretty emotional. I knew I wanted to be a part of Shattered Dreams because I'm very involved with Centennial and Student Council, and I think it's a really like great way to spread awareness for like drunk driving and this stuff really does happen. And we just like really want everyone to be safe. And something like this could really like um, instill in people the importance of not drinking and driving and potentially save a life. So I think that was like probably one of the big reasons why I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be a part of Shattered Dreams because I wanted to I wanted to experience what it would actually be like for myself if this happened to my friends or family and I wanted to get a first hand experience on it. Um I wanted to be able to help spread awareness with how bad drinking and driving really is. I think it's a really impactful experience that it teaches <laughs> students how their actions can like how how like a like a single stupid action can affect your entire life and affect like the lives of other people around you and to just be cautious. I chose to be part of Shattered Dreams because it brings awareness and especially since there's an increasing rate of drunk driving um, within teenagers. Well, maybe be part of Shattered Dreams was I want everybody to know that uh, it's not only you getting affected if you drink and drive; it's other people too. Uh, if you get into a car accident, the other people are in danger just as much as you are. Um, I want to be a part of Shattered Dreams because it really means like a lot to teach people what it is to be affected by like death and things that happen with drunk driving.
There were a couple of reasons that made me want to be a part of Shattered Dreams. The first being that I've known what the program was since I was in early elementary school and I've always seen it and I had a friend last year that took part in it and I saw the impact that it made on her life and I wanted to do that for myself. Uh, well, I had the application before and uh, I didn't finish it and uh, Officer Jones persuaded me to join so he uh, took my application even though it was a little bit late. I don't regret it. The being in Chatted Dreams definitely has an impact on me because now I've heard about stuff around school that's kind of made me more mad about it and what's going on and me sitting here listening to everyone talk about it, it's just left a big impact on me. I guess, I mean I knew it was a problem but I didn't realize like it was like every 15 minutes and like that it has such a ripple effect about because I'm like thinking if I like, if I died you know just my parents or family would be sad and then we'd move on but it's like you know where I work future plans inside the classroom stuff like that so it really has an impact um, then way more than you think. Um, I think during like the whole recording or like the whole scene of the incident, I was a little emotionally discharged. You know, like I thought I was gonna cry, but I was like. This is a little, like towards the ending of like whenever they moved me, I was like, this is a little sad. Like, they're actually moving my body as if I'm dead. From the start, from like first grade, that drinking and driving was bad. And I just felt the same way afterwards. It's bad, don't do it. Um, right now, like me sitting in a car, driving around, I'm a lot more focused and I'm not very, I get really nervous whenever my parents are driving around and I got kind of upset a little bit, like kind of worried about my mom because I heard that she was going through some stuff and yeah. I was supposed to be care flighted, but because of weather and stuff, they put me in an ambulance of that. I wasn't expecting that and that was just um, almost like a surreal experience because it's like, they're like doing all this stuff, like it's acting like it's completely real, but it's all fake. So it's weird like, like, like calling it into the hospital and they're calling it back and then they're, you know, cutting up my clothes and checking for wounds and stuff. It's pretty crazy. You know, I wasn't, expecting when I got back to school after like the two days of being gone I wasn't expecting so many people to recognize or notice who I was and it was constant like I, this, this morning I'd walk by and there'd be several people who'd go like oh you're actually alive and I'm like yeah. I'm not gonna lie I do feel like a celebrity <laughs> like I've just been getting asked like like relentlessly and people have been telling me like I did a great job. My favorite part of Shattered Dreams was getting ready for it and waiting for it to start and then probably the retreat because that was really fun. Just to be able to like to see the officers like in civilian clothing like you won't believe what Officer Jones looks like with like shorts, a t-shirt, and a backwards ball cap. It's the weirdest thing so that, that was probably the best. My favorite part of this entire experience if it wasn't the point that we tried to get it across to everyone it was definitely dying. <laughs> <laughs> making everyone believe that I died. I'd say the crash, it was really sticky because I was covered in blood, but um, I'd say it was still fun to freak people out, scare them into thinking I was actually dead. Even though like we're all like beginners in driving, it's made me like, I mean I never was like a drinker or anything, like drinking just isn't my thing, but now I'm like, I don't think, it's just like not, it's just unnecessary, you know. I, I, I feel relieved that we don't have to go through all this again. And I feel a nice like closure knowing that I've made a difference in somebody's life. If I could go back, I would. There would definitely be no time that if someone was to ask me, hey, would you mind doing this again? I would not stop or hesitate to think twice about it.